happy Monday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is the weekly show where we bring you the latest news from the world of television, plus talk about the week that was in TV. Joining us this afternoon is Josh McCuga. What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Listen, if some of our eyes look heavy, it means that we were up late last night watching Luke Cage, watching Westworld. Still not sure what I saw, but uh, it was good. It was good. It was real good. I'm really <laughs> excited. Jay, who else is here? Also here is Sasha Pearl Raver. Uh, if we look like our eyelids are a little heavy, it's because I'm operating on four hours of sleep, which I like to call the defreeze. I don't know how this girl does it. I'm so tired, you guys. But there's a lot of Luke to talk about. Let's get into it. Awesome. Also here is David Griffin. It is a beautiful morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to be here. I've, I've been up. Sinead and I have been up early. We're talking about Kim Kardashian and that whole thing this morning. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. I was watching Versailles at 6 a.m. Everybody knows what that show's about. Come on now, people. It's in the a.m. It's time to do TV talk. Wake up. David Versailles Griffin, everybody. I, I want you to be my alarm clock instead of The Rock. Like, Aww. I want Griffin to be like, oh. it's time for Versailles. Get up. It's a good day. And you know, Griffin will walk in with, like, freshly cut fruit, Aww, a softball, totally. and flowers. Mm -hmm. I would. The newspaper. He's like, people still read the newspaper? Yeah, yeah. we get the LA Times in my house. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I want now. polygamy to be mm. legal so I can uh, get, a, get a griffin. Uh, <laughs> get a griffin. Yeah. Moving in, folks. Moving in. All right. Sinead, what's first on the run now? All right. John Singleton, the director of Boys in the Hood, has landed a 10-episode series order for Snowfall, a drama about the early days of the crack cocaine epidemic in Los Angeles in the early 1980s. Snowfall was originally piloted last year and was passed on. However, it was rewritten, recast, and then reshot with the new directorial team, and apparently the second times the charm for snowfall which begins production this month for a 2017 premiere josh is a second pilot a bad sign for the future of the show well i think because i mean listen john singleton in my opinion hasn't really done anything amazing since boys in the hood uh if you look at his imdb i mean there's really not a ton there i mean he's directed some episodes of tv here mm -hmm. and there his marion jones documentary his 30 for 30 on espn is by far the worst 30 for 30 that it they've is? oh it's terrible oh i've um, never seen it. it there's just no point to it really at all uh but he does know south central los angeles he does know 80s la because that's boys in the hood right he does know the temperature he does know the climate and what was that movie? I, I'm like trying to look. I was trying to look it up yesterday. I couldn't remember the name. It's about this. The guy's writing an article about the Contras uh, and like the 80s crack epidemic. He's writing a piece and they squash it. It's a movie. Oh. It came out like a couple years ago. I think I can't remember the name of it. If, if, if like Sinead can find it while I'm talking, that would be amazing. But there was a, there was a movie about this. Uh, a guy. He's working for the San Jose Mercury News. And I think it's Jeremy Renner is playing the part. I'm not sure. But, uh, and he's getting tracked down as he's like breaking the story because what you don't realize is that the US government put crack cocaine into the streets. Is to it sell Gary guns. Webb? What's that? Is it Gary Webb? The guy, I think the character's name might have been Gary Webb. It says Jeremy Renner played Gary, Gary Webb and he was a journalist. What's the name of the movie? Kill the, the messenger. messenger. Yeah, Cody yeah, nice Paul. Cody Clutch. So there's Damn. That, that that movie will give you a little bit of base into what this is about. Because if you read the breakdown, there's multiple characters. There's a Mexican gangster. There's a black guy. There's you know there's a white uh, uh, government agent that's coming in because they basically flooded the world with cocaine so that they could pay for guns to send to Iran. Right. And mm -hmm. that's like the whole big mess. And basically, our government started the crack cocaine epidemic in this country. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this. You know, the, this, the fact that they shot a second pilot basically just means Singleton's first pilot wasn't the best, and he had to bring in a team to really punch. It up. Yeah. That's, all. yeah, it's not always a bad thing. Again, reshoots yourself with before. Sometimes yeah. it can be a good thing. Um, Westworld had some production issues. We'll see how that. Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy, Sons of Anarchy did. Um, yeah. Game of Thrones. They reshot yeah. ninety percent of the pilot. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to see this because I'm interested <clears throat> in about the L.A. epidemic. We have movies, you know, with Denzel, American Gangster, about the um, heroin epidemic in, in Harlem, that kind of ruined Harlem, and then uh, we have uh, Blow, but Blow is you know, stylized, and it was more about the uh, stuff from Pablo Escobar yeah. to Johnny Depp's character to more of the upper class uh, uh, white America. It wasn't more about the crack epidemic. So yeah. I'd be curious to know more about that aspect of things. So that's something I really don't know much about. This show is one of the shows <clears throat> that I've been anticipating and anticipating and anticipating. And I was really grateful when I found out that they weren't just gonna kill it because it is such a good concept. And the thing about John Singleton is, Yes, maybe his product has gone down a little bit. Like higher learning was a step down. It's like it's all been a little bit less, but that's because Boys in the Hood was one of the most impressive yeah. debuts I can think of. Mm -hmm. Like there's just certain movies that are I mean, iconic. Has M. Night Shyamalan really done anything since Six Sense? Six Sense? No. But I think that this is such an interesting like 
way to set world to set a show in. I think it's also going to be something where, like the People versus O.J. Simpson, it's going to illuminate something that maybe some people know existed in our American history and other people won't. And the truth is, is television as a learning tool is one of the things that people undervalue. And I'm stoked on it. My one question is, what does a new directorial, what was the line, Sinead, that you said? A new directorial team? Yeah, it was the, uh, it was the Belgian team of, uh, they did a couple indies. Uh-huh. We've said their name before in here. I think like ben- Bilal El Arbi is one of the directors. They're a Belgian team behind two indies. They came in and directed. I don't know, but like Singleton hired two new writers to rewrite it with them. Basically, yeah. I think Singleton was in the room smoking cigarettes, and the other people were like, "This is the script." He's like, "Well, this is way better." <laughs> it says, "Yeah, it says here rewritten, recast, and reshot with a new directorial team." Yeah. So it's like they totally scrapped everything that they and had. just started from scratch yeah. with Pretty the same cool. concept. Uh, I'm excited. The one thing was was I thought John Singleton was going to direct it, but he will just be overseeing, and I'm. Okay okay with that yeah, I mean I'm sure he'll direct an episode here and there sure. uh, because he has done TV that's mm-hmm. a flash episode yep. he did uh, he actually did um, uh, one of the episodes of uh, OJ people versus OJ yeah, yeah. it was a great and episode was great. yeah, yeah. Um, so and also too we talked about it real quick at the narco season two remember how we talked about how we wanted to see a different cartel yes so this is maybe giving us a little bit of a newer look instead of like being stuck in Colombia we get to go to LA where they're flooding the market it's a different bit. cartel the American government <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the biggest cartel of all yeah Shinasti what's next all the votes have been tallied in Amazon's most watched pilot season to date and all three comedy pilots I love dick the tick and the next <laughs> great TV show that will most likely win every Emmy in 2017, Jean-Claude Van Johnson have been ordered to series. (laughs) Slow clap. Slow clap. Jean-Claude Van Johnson, guys. Sorry. So good. So good. (laughs) Are you guys done? (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) Sasha. No, I'm done. Do you think that I Love Dick is the worst best name for a show ever? I think I Love Dick is the best name for the worst show ever. Uh, oh, God, come man. on. Ooh. I am. Uh, oh, you're the only one that kind of liked this one. <laughs> David didn't like it. Uh, uh, Why does keep this? Uh, not for oh, me. Not, 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 not this version. All of, <laughs> dude, all of America is. If it's White Escapism, it in better have Rolling Hills and some British <laughs> That's why I was watching for science 6 a.m. this morning. Silver Lake. Or it better be set in right. Silver Lake. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. This, for me, is so exciting because Jean-Claude Van Johnson was... This in Atlanta were the two 30 minute offerings that when they debuted, I was like, <gasps> give me all of it, give it to me now, I wanna see all of it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't think that I will watch The Tick, nor I Love Dick, because I Love Dick truly was like just daggers in my eye. <laughs> Wait, you guys, giggle time. I giggle time, you read it. giggle time on, on Griffin. Griffin's just like, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is it because I'm saying I love Dick? No, no, not at all. <laughs> is it because I said I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take it? I love Dick. <laughs> I will is it because say, I said I'm done with Dick. When they announced this, I think this was like Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. I was like, oh, and they renewed I love Dick and Cody just like giggling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love the maturity level, you guys. Oh, uh, listen, I listen. I do love Dick. I just don't love the show. And I love John Claude Van Johnson. And sorry, I Mrs. can. Griffin. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Griffin. Sorry, Mrs. Griffin. It's so it's early. early. <laughs> My tea isn't even done yet. I am so excited to watch JCVJ on repeat uh, with God. my man, Josh oh. McCuga. Uh, we're doing full episode reviews, <laughs> yeah. two hours long. We'll break down every script detail right here on Collider. Oh, uh, can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giggle time. This is what well, I'm You guys are acting like people. these shows are masterpieces. I know, I mean, it's like hilarious. Like, it's like, oh, the, the, fact that, the fact that you said <laughs> right. this in Atlanta that yeah, blows right? my mind Atlanta that you put might be it one of the most Atlanta. important shows we've had in the last five Look, years this is like this is like no, a fun right. funny entertaining what I said was, show this in Atlanta were the two that I said give me all of it right well, now I didn't say like too. oh Atlanta Obviously and JCVJ are on the same cultural plane the cultural <laughs> performance of Atlanta at this point is way beyond what JCVJ <laughs> will ever do but come on <laughs> Sasha's like I don't know <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, I loved Black J- Justin Bieber last yeah, week. Black that Justin made Bieber me so amazing. happy. Sorry, Atlanta segue. But let's move on. What do you think, David? <laughs> I mean, these shows are all right. Again, it's okay. I mean, 
I feel like today now go out, we'll hang out and do something. You guys are off just having wait a the second, time wait of your lives. There will these be shows. an episode this season where he is fighting in a British countryside period piece, mm. and David's mind will be I'll watch, blown. I'll watch that episode. You yeah. tell me what episode the it is. The Pole Dark crossover. Pole Dark crossover. <laughs> Pole Dark Van Johnson. That's too much. Yeah. I can handle that. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> All right, Shane, what's next? Sean Levy, a main producer behind Stranger Things on Netflix, was interviewed by Southern California Public Radio last week and had some interesting things to say about Stranger Things Season 2. He said, quote, This has been the challenge of it. On the one hand, as we've, see, as we've seen in the movie world, to do a follow-up that feels like the same thing is disappointing to an audience. Season 2 is next level. Some crazy stuff. But we must service these characters who are now beloved, who are known to the audience. David. Does this worry you about season two? No, it makes me more excited, more thrilled, more interested in season two because I'd be afraid if they're trying to repeat themselves. Of course, some things don't broke. Why fix it? But I think that's what happens with sophomore slumps. You can start buying into your own success. We saw that with shows, even some of the best of all time. Sopranos bought into its own success, kind of started repeating itself. It's like, I don't want to see them do it. Let's go next level. If it fails, at least they tried. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Leftover season two, we saw that as well. So with this here, I just think it's funny. Southern California Public Radio, he's like, whoo, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. We do a listen to that interview, <laughs> even though I actually do like public I radio. I like the eighth guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Maguga, where'd you find this one? Yeah, um, I love No, this is a good sign. I, I want him to go next level. I want to see them try something different. I don't want them to see do the same old thing. Let's just do the repeat and capture all that nostalgia. Let's try something different. Hopefully they do that. I don't know. That's well, pure. with uh, with the one <clears throat> teaser that we've gotten so far where we have the like wonderful music mm -hmm. and the flashes of the names there were names that we didn't recognize so i think that what this is going to be is a layering in of other storylines worked into the fabric of what we've already come to know and love but i'm thrilled to hear that they're going to push it further i mean yeah. if i don't have some of the things that we had last season like if there is not justice for barb oh, oh they'll be, be mad. justice for barb That's i like, will be mad yeah. but I can't wait. I mean, just hearing the theme music, I get pumped. This is good. And I trust Sean Levy. I mean, Sean Levy is a director. He understands how to service audiences. Yeah. Like, he's responsible for huge blockbusters. And he really knows, I think, what people want to see. I think he understands the medium. And I think he understands feeding the audience. And this has obviously serviced us so well. I can't wait. But I want more. And I want more now. I and I just don't want them to rush here's it. Here's my thing. And I've said it since the beginning i always thought this should be one season because you these, these kids are buying into themselves i'm telling you these little kids aren't they're they're not going to turn in the same are you performance talking smack about my girl millie, no, bobby, millie brown? bobby brown isn't buying into herself she's only rapping on every late night talk show come on these kids are getting hollywood eyes they're getting Corey feldman they're getting Corey haim oh, no, you sorry, better. Corey. oh i wish i could remember the Corey haim feldman song that made you so mad the other day so i could sing it right oh, now no uh, oh, so i on. just I, I don't here's the thing I, you you, you are you're running the risk of like these guys are like we gotta take this to the next level and then like the predator shows up you know what I mean like the we, predator we, would be awesome dope. Maybe and all comes out and he's like oh, yeah. come on kill up. me what are you waiting for <laughs> nah that'd be awesome I would watch that yeah Griffin and I am yes. the bomb Stranger Things versus Predator oh my god yeah. that is amazing come on Maguga, get Maguga. Hey, Stranger Things Versailles 2017 I cannot believe that you are saying that these kids my only concern is they the have to like speed up the seasons because what will be weird is when they're going through puberty, puberty. and then because oh. that's just not like that's just like, not a kind to time. The that show the first two seasons was so funny because the kid was so innocent. Then he his voice changed. You're like this kid's a douche. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, he can't help. He's going through puberty. It I know. Happens. I mean, we all we all go through it. I'm, listen, I want to get crushed in the comments for saying the kids are buying in Hollywood, but I'm just saying. Listen to me now. You guys may think that I'm like I'm I'm some prophesizer that's an idiot. But I'm not. <laughs> Believe me when I say Stranger Things will not get nominated for an Emmy ew, for ew, best drama. Ew. It will not. And those kids will turn it in a poorer performance in season two. Oh, ew! Oh my God! Fighting words. Kids, hold kids on, are cute on, when they're on, acting. On, when they get older, wait, they get obnoxious. You are forgetting. What? <laughs> you can't just drop the mic on that. You are forgetting one of the biggest things of this show. Who's on the show with them? Winona Mother Un Ryder, who was a child actor who did not become obnoxious. Oh, yeah. No. And they want to take Winona so, Ryder's ah, example. She, yeah. she, she, <laughs> she was doing blow off Hugh Grant when she was like 14. That is well, not true. Hugh Grant was not famous yet. She didn't shoplift until she was in her 40s or late 30s. 
thirties. <laughs> Even Adam turned Stop around it. on that line. Sorry. <laughs> He's you like, oh, No, <laughs> Billy Bobby Brown and the rest of the cast. You think my boy Dustin, my boy Dustin, who is a Broadway child, is gonna get Hollywood Ooh, eyes? Nothing says success like Broadway parents. <laughs> Give me a break. You I'm guys, telling you. this I'm is what you. happens when we have not had enough caffeine yet. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right, man. now we have lit up the common board. <laughs> um, guys, let's uh, move into superhero rundown. We got some fun stuff to talk about and a little announcement at the end of this, as well as this will lead into our Luke Cage season one full season review. All kinds of spoilers, so get ready. Sweet Sinead, Christmas. Let's talk a little bit about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Episode two, season four, Ghost Rider. How you feeling? What are you thinking? Um, I like this one better than I, or more than I liked the premiere, okay. to be honest. I'm also like really impressed with how much they're showing Ghost Rider right off from the from the get go, mm -hmm. and all of his his and Daisy's interactions excite me. Um, spoiler alert! Like major spoiler. If you don't, I mean, whatever, it's fine. Hold but on, let's give it in three, two, one. Um, spoiler. Like um, from from where they start in the beginning of the episode, they're fighting again, and she mm. ends up with like fractured arms, and it's like real intense. Yeah. He he doesn't hold back on her at all, which I love. Mm -hmm. To the end of the episode where she gets in his car, like I feel like they're totally foreshadowing a relationship a, between a the two of them. Yeah, and it excites me a little bit because she needs like something. She needs her stakes to be a little bit higher right now. That was my issue with the premiere. I was like, she cares so much, but I didn't really understand understand what her stakes were just yet. It was sort of like uh, May in season two. Do you right. know what I mean? Because she, her husband was like divorced, whatever, turned yeah. into the big bad, right? So like there was a whole thing. And really Chloe Bennett, Daisy, Sky, Quake, whatever we're calling her now, she's, uh, she doesn't really. She never really had a love interest since like season two, like right. Lincoln last year. But the, the chemistry between was, those two well, wasn't Well, that's what I'm great. saying. Their stakes weren't high, and her with um, what's his face it starts with a W. Why can't I think of his name? Ward. Oh, Ward. Yeah. Um, her with Ward was great. Like when yeah. she was in that whole like being so like. She was pulled in so many different directions. Mm -hmm. She didn't know whether or not to believe him or not to believe him, all this stuff. That was like my favorite part of her because I feel like it can get a little obnoxious when she's just running around. Quaking it up. Yeah, quaking yeah. it up. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, I also like the director and I like that they didn't really put a lot of emphasis on him just yet. Like we found out that he's an inhuman. Right. And if you like read the comics, like he's a famous Marvel Comics character, right. so that's exciting too. But I like that it wasn't like thrown in our faces. But the more exciting part about all of this is like May's <clears throat> delusions and her hallucinations and stuff like that. She's yeah. super like messed up right now in the head with this, like ghost, this ghost thing. thing. Yeah. It's a really cool storyline. I just hope that it's not one of those like two episode it's one a and flash done to things. Some of the Agent Carter stuff that happened. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and what I what I. It, it, you can tell, you could see from the beginning of the episode that the director's going to be this nice guy, but then when it, like push comes to shove, he's like, listen, Colson, you don't run this stuff anymore. I do, and then obviously we're going to get to the part where he, Colson's going to start battling because he's going to be making some crazy decisions. Right. We'll see, but I do like that storyline. I do like the director that they introduced. Uh, I love that, that he's an inhuman. And, yeah. Um, I, I think that that what we're getting out of Ghost Rider is what I wanted, right. which is like, this kid is a really good actor. He's amazing. And he's he's not, you know, a lot of times on some of these ABC shows and in past seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it's been really hammy, mm -hmm. really, you know, kind of just like getchy and a little too networky. Right. This season, not it's so not, much. It's not so much. I'm still waiting for it to like pop off. I'm yeah. still waiting for it to like <clears throat> throw me that like hook and I'm just like, all right, I'm all in. Yeah. But right now, Ghost Rider is enough to keep watching because I think he's amazing. Agreed. A little side note. Jason O'Mara, who is the new director, yeah. he is the voice of Batman in a lot of the DC animated films. He's been doing Batman for the last four oh, or five nice. years. Now. So he voices Batman. Yeah, he's pretty nice. hot. He's yeah. Irish, I think. I think he's yeah. Irish. I think so. All right, Sinead, what's next? All right. The season of the CW's DC TV universe promises to either be the biggest or the busiest. Either way, when all four shows, including sophomore transfer Supergirl, get together, the villains better be big. It looks like the villains will be the, the I almost said the, the denominators. <laughs> That's the lowest common denominator. <laughs> the, the dominators, an alien race that look a lot like Mars attacks and act like the aliens in Independence Day. David, do you like the choice of the, what, the dominators? The dominators. The dominators. I like the denominators better. <laughs> so, I prefer dominoes myself. Well, because okay, math be for I'm me out. is very Sorry, scary. Dementors. <laughs> the men, yeah. So, yeah, that's I wish. Butter. I wish that. Yeah, Cody, can you that flash that, that image back up again for me, please? Thank you. So you're going to look at this image here of 
the the dominators and you see that, that that red dot they have on their head so the bigger the dot the more prominent you are in their society they have a caste system oh they size queens. They have a ca- they, yeah so size does matter in 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 their civilization and um oh, here we go size Game time. does matter size does in matter. their civilization <laughs> david dave i'm not going there <laughs> My Hashtag mother, my, I love dick. Oh, my gosh. oh man! So uh, I hope my dick kicked in. You guys, is, won't you guys we won't get. I'm telling you, we won't get explicit. I love dick is the name of a show coming on Amazon. It has it's also true. my. It's also my father-in-law's name. So yeah. And it's also my new <laughs> Twitter handle. David Griffin. Oh, okay, David Griffin was just like, oh my god. Um, in my father-in-law, Dick Fox. Richard. No, he goes by Dick. Dick, Dick Fox. Fox. And my very dear friend, Dick Lowry. Dick Lowry, who is the second, he is Dick Lowry Jr. And his dad is Dick Lowry Sr. You know Senior. a lot of dicks. I do know a lot of dicks. Um, so we're going to go. In- Sorry, Mrs. Griffin. <laughs> your son did that, not David us. David Griffin <laughs> laying some. Oh, this is gold. I love it. Keep going. So dude. back to the, the dominators, <laughs> the Dementors dominators. Um, so uh, Martian Manhunter has a direct link to them. They came in one time, they dropped this thing called a gene bomb, and the gene bomb messed with the metahuman gene, and it took away some metahuman powers, and Ooh. but then like it made some new metahumans, and then Martian Manhunter found a way to reverse engineer, and they got the powers back. Oh. So it's interesting. So basically what it does is it messes with the metahumans, their ability to be, be super. Because you know, Marvel has mutants. Uh, DC has metahuman, so, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see what they have. Maybe I, I hope that this is going to be a crossover event, and maybe it'll affect all of the the metahumans in the, you know, Berlanti universe. That'd be pretty cool. Love it. Yeah. All right, Dominators. Mm-hmm. Sinead, what's next? And what seems to be the old CW switcheroo? The newest trailer for Arrow season five looks to be the one to possibly bring us back to that season two greatness. Oliver Queen is killing again. Josh, did you get the happy giggles when you saw this trailer? Kind of did. Listen, all the trailers getting up to until now haven't been that great. They've been really Arrow season three, Arrow season four. But now this trailer, he's just stabbing dudes. He's like, he's, I mean, he's this badass trailer, the badass mayor. And they're going back to the Bratva stuff, which we've been waiting for since season one. So uh, this trailer is got me more excited than anything I've seen in any of the CW trailers. I'm talking Flash, I'm talking Supergirl, I'm talking Legends of Tomorrow. This one got me the most excited of any of the new shows. It is a great trailer. I'm just a little bit worried because trailers can be deceiving. Sometimes trailers can be fantastic, yeah. and the show or movie will suck. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think this season's, like I said, I have hope. This is going to be the season where everything comes full circle. David, hope for Cy Griffin the third. Yeah, I have hope. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's got hope, everybody. This was a great trailer. All right, it guys, was. listen. Uh, so a lot of you have been tweeting at us. Thank you for tweeting at us. Uh, hashtag Cloudy TV Talk. Asking where the recap shows are going to be. If we're going to do recap shows, if we're going to do reviews, we're, what, what we're going to do. Uh, basically, because our audiences for those were very scattered last year, uh, we decided to not do those for certain shows. So we will be doing a lot of mini reviews here on Collider TV Talk during Superhero Rundown when we basically think the, that episode deserves to be talked about. So obviously we're going to talk about the season premieres next week in Superhero Rundown, do mini reviews of them. And basically that's what we're going to do is do mini reviews here on the show. If we think an episode or something that's pushing the button maybe deserves a little bit of extra time, we will go into that, maybe in a separate video, maybe just here on Collider TV Talk. Uh, but as of right now, if you guys are looking for the recap shows, they will be here on TV Talk every Monday. I know for Flash and Arrow, that's like waiting five days, but stick with us. We will talk about them. Uh, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, maybe. Uh, but mm. I mean, David will talk about Legends. I'll talk about Legends I, Legends I wasn't a big fan of Legends. Anyway, uh, we will talk about them. We will give you our opinions, where we think it's going, how we feel about it, but with how things are and the audience of whatever, the mini reviews and the reviews of the shows will be here on Collider TV Talk, which transitions us perfectly into this weekend's breaking the internet moment, Luke Cage, season one, on Netflix, Marvel's Luke Cage, spinoff of Jessica Jones in this Defenders universe. Uh, On Saturday, the streaming service went down. Luke Cage broke it with his fists of fury. I mean, he was, he's awesome. (laughs) Sweet Christmas, he broke (laughs) Netflix. (laughs) And uh, if you go on uh, Cloud Video YouTube channel right now, you'll see some mini reviews of up, so, up to what episode 10 yeah the uh, our team dropped the ball on Sunday a little bit some people were stuck in Vegas uh, I don't know what it's that means we don't I mean listen I've been in traffic stuck. outside I'm trapped in Vegas what Here's do I do it, I, don't I guess I just have to gamble get and get boobs in my face for another hour <laughs> no. or seven but you can't get stuck in traffic I've, it's taken me eight to nine hours in uh, getting yeah, out of Vegas 15. for traffic so uh, we understand it happens but we will spoiler alert throw it up there Cody if you guys don't want to be spoiled on Luke Cage season one I would walk away now for about 10 minutes, 
So we're going to go into depth. We're going to give our opinions. We're going to talk about where we see this going forward. Talk about some Easter eggs. Obviously, big spoilers, our honest opinions. And uh, awesome, one of the writers of Luke Cage will be coming in in the next couple of weeks. He's also writing five uh, episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. His name's Matt Owens. He's a good buddy of mine. We're going to talk Luke Cage, mm -hmm. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., what's coming up. He's probably working on Defenders as well. So uh, pretty cool to have him in. We will bring him on, uh, on the set here and talk all about it. But let's get into it. Overall thoughts, I know Sinead and I were definitely kind of dozing in and out of tw episodes 12 and 13, so I had to go back and watch them this morning. That's why I'm a little uh, bright-eyed, not so bushy-tailed. <laughs> what did you guys think? Let's start with David. I thought this was a great show. Mm -hmm. Like all Marvel Netflix shows, I feel like it could have been a little shorter. I think they need to stick to 10. They don't need 13. 100% with yeah. it. I, I thought feel like it was 10, <clears throat> and when I found no. out it was 13, I was like, mm. Yeah, there's always just a few too many, but I think this, and I'm going to say this right here, I'm declaring this, the words of David Griffin, this is Marvel's riskiest television show they've ever done mm -hmm. uh, because they let the writers and directors really go after uh, events that are happening, you know, in our society right now. Most Marvel, Marvel's very safe. It's a very safe place to go. You go watch a Civil War movie, it's very safe. It's very comforting. You see Guardians of the Galaxy, it's very safe, very comforting. You watch Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., even I would say Daredevil, even though it's a little bit grittier, a little more violent, it still feels very safe. Luke Cage is tackling issues of Black Lives Matter. They use the N-word just like Atlanta does, and they didn't censor them using that. They have a lot of hip-hop. They have the Delphonics. My mom, I listened to Delphonics when I was a kid. Yeah. My mom listened to the Delphonics. My dad loved the I Delphonics. I mean, all this stuff is very black culture. I was talking to my dad, even he was like, Dave, do you think this will, you know, he watches Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He's like, do you think this will, a large audience will watch this? And I said, I hope so. I hope like Atlanta, because they, like Sasha said, they went so specific that this will be uh, this will uh, be approachable on a larger scale. I thought this was so well done. I know I'm talking about more about the grand scheme of things, not the individual details, but That's important. I, I, I think that this show had a vision. It wanted to portray Harlem, which is going on in Harlem right now. Keep Harlem black, that whole thing. I mean, it's, it's real. This is what's happening in society right now, and it just happens to have this awesome superhero with this incredible cast of characters played by an incredible cast. This is Marvel's most most daring thing they've ever done, and I'm happy they did it, so I, I, I give this A+. Plus. On a totally side note, <clears throat> This may be the best musical show we've seen. Because like, we've been talking about it. Oh my it. god! Oh my god! I mean, <laughs> oh my god! I, and that I, I don't want to take away from what, what you said, David. Because no, I, no, I no, there's a lot of things. Agree. Like I said, there's a lot of things to talk we'll get about. Get into but more I'm, about yeah, the Marvel stuff. Yes, um, I I agree. I think it should have been ten episodes. Uh, I think all of these Marvel shows and most of these Netflix binge shows should be ten because Narcos was great as ten. Um, Stranger Things was eight. Eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we're not. I'm not like. Oh man, I wish it was five more. Because I feel like we did get a lot of Misty Knight just saying, he's innocent. She must have said he's innocent 150 times. Mm -hmm. And I, that just took me out of it a little bit. I thought um, <sighs> there were some uh, beautiful parts in those last four or five episodes that could have been just scrunched down into two full episodes and made that a lot tighter. Um, I thought that the most impressive thing about this show was the acting. Mm -hmm. I thought all of those, uh, there wasn't one actor in it. Like, uh, uh, yes, on. there was. Hold on one second. But yes, there was. Who? Which one? Nope. Do your thing, well, and then I'll I, tell you. I, the guy that played Willis Stryker, when he came in, he's like, can you dig it? I was like, that could have been so cheesy. And I thought that he kind he's of knocked that actor. out of the park. Mm -hmm. I thought that he was he was fantastic. Um, I loved when they went back to, to, the, to the doctor uh, who basically put Luke Cage, and Luke Cage found out that his wife was exploiting him that was a that was a heartbreaking moment mm -hmm. that's like finding out your girlfriend's cheating on you with your brother like that was terrible that's never happened to me my brother's hideous but um i'm kidding no, my brother's the best <laughs> totally oh my God. joking he's the man Bakuga. Bakuga love. <laughs> josh's brother right. i apologize on behalf of josh. <laughs> <laughs> that just like broke my heart no he's the best Ben's the best um but uh I, you know let me hear some sasha i, I want to stop talking so i think this is hilarious that you said the acting is so great because the doctor is horrible oh, the Burstein? doctor the dude who brings who like created yeah. luke cage he is such a bad actor that every single time he was on screen i was like oh, oh he's hmm. so bad he's he did, so he was bad hit or miss for me. I, I oh agree. i thought he was terrible the thing okay let's go through what i love i loved every moment with the hoodie where they were specifically referencing black life matter i thought that mm. that was incredible having grown up basically right at the base of uh, where Spanish Harlem began and like knowing the dangers of Harlem in the 80s, 90s and 2000s to see the renaissance of it and to like have a show set there, I loved also. The music, when Netflix crashed, I went to Spotify as you all should and pulled up their Luke Cage list. 
I rocked mm. so hard for so many hours. It has been on in my house ever since. It is the best. Bang, bang. It is such incredible music. I have never been with a woman. Sorry, Mrs. Griffin. <laughs> but oh my God, if Rosario Dawson offered, I'm there. <laughs> Holy F. Yeah. I thought that this was at times a little boring. I think it's because it was too long. Mm. I think that this as an eight episode show would have been one of my favorite things that had ever been done on Netflix. I think as a 10 episode show, it would have been a slam dunk as a 13 episode show. I thought it lagged a little bit. Um, but I also loved the dude who played Bobby Fish, who's also on This Is Us, and I could watch that guy do anything wire. forever. Yes, and The Wire. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Love Wire actors guy. in this yeah, one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Sinead, let's get your <clears> opinion. Um, all right. Um, um, I agree with everything that you guys are saying. Okay, so things that I liked. Um, well, for me, the best parts were when he was kicking ass, right? right. So. I felt like there was just too much space in, beta in between the times that he was kicking ass. <laughs> and that only, I only started feeling like that about around episode eight or nine? Five. Five or six. Okay. Okay. So the beginning, I was like, oh, sweet, sweet. This is good. By episode two, I was like, all right, I'm in. Yeah. Episode three, I was like, totally in. Once I got to episode five or six, I was like, all right, okay. By episode eight i think i was like okay it's getting slightly boring slightly just mm -hmm. slightly not enough where i'm like this is a boring show like i did not enjoy it i enjoyed it so much but i do feel like it could have held my attention more mm -hmm. if it was tighter and the other thing mm -hmm. that i think that they did not as good of a job as they could have done that narcos did such an incredible job with is this is a binge property, it right? Is. So what you need to do is you need to ramp, 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 give it a little down, and then ramp, 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 ramp for the next episode. Like there needs to be a major moment of impact at the end of every single episode right. that drives you into the next one. They didn't really do that. No, they didn't. And that was, I think, it one was of the kind of like the opposite. Yeah, like they kind of resolved things a little too much for me. Uh, yeah, because then it was like you're left as soon as the episode ends, you're kind of left like having just come off of this big crazy moment. You're right. like. Like, it's not like a, your heart isn't still pounding, like waiting. You're kind yeah. of like just soothing down. I will down. say yeah. after, like, cause we, we did all the way up to episode six mm -hmm. together. We did the mini reviews you guys can see on the channel. <clears throat> after episode six, I was like, God, I just want to get to episode seven and episode eight. I'm just like jonesing for more Luke Cage. And then I got to like 10 and 11 and I was like, I, I got to get through these episodes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't, I didn't want to feel like that. And I thought that there were so many brilliant moments in like episode eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, yeah. 13. Again, that could have been scrunched into episodes eight, nine, and ten. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, there's something to be said about, you know, uh, Daredevil season two had basically had like three villains in it, right? You had Punisher, who, whose storyline kind of ended around episode four or five, and he came back, and then you got the hand, and then you got Elektra, and you did, and, and it got really busy mm -hmm. because it was long because it was thirteen episodes. Luke Cage could have benefited from ten yep. to keep that story. It's a much smaller story. Correct. It's not yeah. as Epic, I will say you know, that, like, yeah. Rosario Dawson, her coming onto the show, not from the beginning, like, she was the light that I that I needed in the yeah. show. Like, she was so good. So good. I believe every single word that comes out of that girl's mouth. It's unbelievable. I mm -hmm. think she's incredible. I don't. I don't even under. I don't even understand. She does, sometimes. Like, she's one of those she's Hollywood perfect. actresses that she's been uh, a long time. She's 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 better than everything she's uh -huh. in. Yeah. She's mm -hmm. just like one of those people that you just put her in and she stands out yeah. and she's incredible and i looked forward to her being in every scene like every scene i was like oh yes yeah like the end when yeah. she pulled the iron fist ticket oh that was great she's walking away yeah you know? but the other things that i have to say that i really loved were the way that they constructed misty's vision of crime scenes yeah, yeah, yeah. i loved that that was cool oh, that was i thought really that was cool awesome yeah. but i had a big problem with her partner who i knew instantly was going to be a villain yeah. because it's that guy who's been a villain Pulp in 500 fiction. million mm -hmm. things so yeah. i was like oh this dude and the other thing Look, I loved Sons of Anarchy. Theo Rossi is as intimidating as Sinead DeFries. And Sinead could, I'm sure, could be intimidating. That's all right. I'm not intimidated. Well, but wait, like, wait a second. Cool. I'm intimidated by Sinead DeFries. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Theo Rossi is as intimidating as David Griffin. Like, I could beat up Theo yeah, Rossi. Sorry, you're not too intimidating. I'm so sorry, David. It's so, it's, he's a lovely right? guy. Yeah. Oh, look at all those hands on David. <laughs> hands across the griff. Uh, I just, him as a big bad was utterly unbelievable for me and uh, like the character of shades i thought could have been so cool you know what i liked about shades is that they made him the smartest guy in the room i really he liked always, him well people were calling too. him like he's going to be like the little finger character 
Mm. He he want, he's going to take over everything at the end. That's what a lot of people were thinking. Yeah. Mm, and, and I, 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 listen, I, I agree with you. I don't think he's super intimidating. What I think is he's very calculated. Yeah. It would be it would be a lot better because nobody listened to him, and I think that's why because he he was not intimidating. But at the end, he is the smartest guy in the room. I just didn't buy him in the world. Okay. I didn't like. I didn't. He didn't make sense to me. He also didn't make sense to me in Sons of Anarchy. And I thought that actually the way they played him in his last like season and a half made the most he's, sense because that felt he seems he's weak. pretty yeah. he's soft weak to me. See, I yeah. really liked him. I I liked him from the beginning. Like I was like, oh, I'm into this. But I will say also another one of my things that I really liked was I liked the way that they they told us Luke Cage's story, like Luke's story as Carl Lucas first in the jail scene. I don't feel like that was obnoxious and forced at all. Like even though it was kind of like a one off episode I like that they kind of switch between that and him being buried under the rubble mm -hmm. I love that yeah and it was it was very like a natural way for us to like understand where he came from and like mm -hmm. all this stuff and and that was an homage to his original character because that's how he's dressed right which I love that was awesome and like yeah. the thingy on his head yeah. and everything so I I really Dickless. really liked that episode a lot I love and we talked about it on our mini review I love origin stories yeah so that was definitely my favorite episode of the season when he had that sweet like beard wig thing going yeah. on because mm -hmm. he, he looked he looked pretty amazing. The one thing that I had a problem with in that episode was nobody can take a single blade Bic razor and shave that beard off and then look that clean. It's impossible. Oh, yeah. and see what I thought was he is made out of like you know in like, su Superman like almost, super yeah. titanium. So wouldn't he have just like been breaking all the razors? Like I wanted to see like this pile of razors in the <laughs> sink where like the beard hair is even so hard yeah. that it's like it's like what must happen when Griff shaves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Sunny laughs> hard man. He's also, intimidating. Yeah, one more point. Sorry to keep bringing yeah. up race. I think it's very important. Like you watch shows like Atlanta. Um, you know, listen to hip hop. Obviously, you know, just dropping N word all the time. I love again Marvel taking a huge risk and confronting that issue. Alfre Woodard rejects that. Her character rejects that word. She's like, I don't like when you use that word. Uh, Luke Cage in the very she early episodes, yeah. basically almost that's it, it's a slave word. It's a horrible word. Mrs. Right. Griffin does not use that word. My family does not use that word. Just because you're black doesn't mean like you hear it. It's like oh, it's just black people saying uh, for black people it's okay. Like not all black people. Luke Cage says don't call me that. That's not what I am. That demeans me. That brings me down. I am bigger than that. I rise up. I'm a proud black man. I sweep floors and women respect it. That kind of thing. You know, it's just I thought that was so powerful. Like, you don't see that either. People just say the right. word and it's just no consequence. In this show, they said no. I don't like the use of that word it's demeaning to me that's so powerful you don't see that a lot on television you right. know you know what <clears throat> uh this show i think did better than all the other netflix shows have done i know somebody tweeted me it could be like i like luke cage wasn't good as jessica jones mm, take it easy nah. um Ugh. okay in daredevil season one and two and jessica jones season one at points in the show you hate the main character at not one point in luke cage that i was nope. i like i don't like you i want i want him to win every time and every time it seemed like he was down he did something incredible that brought him back uh and i thought that that was the most brilliant part of this season because going forward he's my defender like i don't jessica jones can get thrown off a bridge i don't care daredevil i really like punisher obviously i'm totally on board with but give me luke cage yeah. all day long mm -hmm. i wanted to hang out with luke cage i want him to be my dishwasher bartender best bud hoodie wearing Friend, like right. that, uh. I loved Luke Cage, and I hate goatees, but that man can rock. Well, a I feel like I feel like we can relate to him more, and maybe that's just the incredibleness of this show is that they made it so real and about real things that are happening, real awful things that are happening mm -hmm. in our world today. Absolutely. Where I felt like watching it, like I understood, like I understood a little bit more about his entire world and his environment, and like the why he feels the way he does, or why he hates that word so much, or like just like random things. I'm like, yeah, like I believe you because like this is really effed up stuff that's happening in real life right now. So I feel like that was so smart of them to do that and really like throw it at us. And you know what too is, and a lot of times in in superhero shows or shows that are a little trying to be a little more PG to PG-13, mm -hmm. they, they preach at you. Right. And it's not like, and it's sort of just like. Uh, it's forced. It's forced. This mm -hmm. didn't feel forced. Yeah. It felt like very natural kind yep. of thing. I, I mean, I really, really. Because they shoot in New York City, which is awesome. Yeah. They yeah. shoot in yeah. New York. Schnepp got to visit the sets, and that's, that's really cool. And, uh, you know, uh, Amanda was watching me watch it. She was like, she's like, that actually sounds like a good show. It doesn't feel, it didn't feel like a superhero show. No, no it, it really not did. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So out of five sweet Christmases. <laughs> What are you giving Luke Cage? I'm giving it a hard five. If it was a ten, if it was a ten episode season, like a seven and a half out yeah. of five. Yeah, wow. Like that, I mean, I loved this show. I'm gonna Hail give him, to the chief. 
I, I do love it. I'm going to give it a 4.7 Sweet Christmases. Okay. Uh, I I just remembered somebody else who was a terrible actor. The woman who ran the Chinese food restaurant, although I will admit oh, that I ate her heart. She was bless her heart. Genghis Connie's husband wasn't very good. No, 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 neither of them were good. When, oh, I mean, they were both their hearts. They were, uh, but I did get Chinese food on Saturday yeah. because I am so susceptible oh, to suggestions. Ever since I was like, I want orange chicken. I want orange chicken. Yeah. I want orange chicken. I got, I got, some, some, at yeah. I got some at the house. I got some at the house. You yeah. need yeah. to come over. Yeah. Uh, I will give this a four point. Two seven five. You guys are ridiculous. Wow. Of, I feel like of, we of, should get places. rid of your decimal points and just <laughs> call it like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Like this is absurd. <laughs> Every week you guys no. add more numbers no. onto your decimal. That's the first time we've had a three decimal point. Four point two seven five. <laughs> All right, six. math major from. Come on. It's just annoying me. Um. Okay. Fine. With one decimal, <laughs> I give Luke Cage a four point. Five. 4.5 sweet Christmases from Sinead DeFries. Sweet Christmas. All right, um, let's move on. Obviously, last night was a big premiere night for HBO for their, their new series, Westworld, which has been tumultuous. Um, we're not going to review it here on Collider TV Talk right now. What we are going to do is we're going we're gonna to put a separate review up, probably 10 to 15 minutes of us here at the desk talking about Westworld on HBO. But real quick, why don't we just give our overall opinions to tease for what is to come in the Westworld full review. Let's start with you, Sasha Paul Raver. Well, having gotten spoiled and heard some opinions around the table before we started the show, I believe I will be the voice of reason and the one who says repeatedly, this show is great, you guys can suck it. Whoa, <laughs> to suck it? I didn't say it wasn't great, I'm just saying, Everybody thinks it's going to be the next Game of Thrones, oh, and that's like, no. like I yeah. said in the text. No, it's like comparing One Direction to the Beatles. Like this is going to be a good show. Sure, but I'm not like, oh my god, they pushed Bran out of the window. Spoiler <laughs> alert! Ooh, if you haven't seen Game of Thrones season one at this point, just go ahead. And oh Sex, please, Cody. Oh, put that is. away. Put that away. No, no. There. <laughs> Cody, Cody Hall, the uh, Bran Stark of our crew. Yeah, over here, indeed. Morgan himself, right under the set. David, what do you think? Sauce, you know this is my jam, girl. Show was good. Uh, next to. The beautiful Sasha Pearl Raver. Evan oh. Rachel Wood might be one of the most pretty, beautiful oh, women in the so world. Good. She is gorgeous. She, and she is so good she's on so the show. She's so good. She's good in yeah. True Blood. I loved her in True yeah. Blood. She was um, Queen Sophie. Uh, no, I absolutely love this. This is my jam. I, I love artificial intelligence conversations. Like, you know, uh, do androids dream of electric sheep? You know, that was basically the uh, birth Blade Runner mm -hmm. and uh, Battlestar Galactica, of course. I, I, I love this. Is my, I mean, this is, this is me. I mean, this is my jam. Wow. And not everything needs to be compared to Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is not the end all be all of all television. It's not even my favorite television show. And people. this is coming from a guy who loves things with rolling hills. I like Game of Thrones, games. but it's not no, the end all be all. This is amazing. Yeah. This is everything you need. It's science fiction mm -hmm. and it's literal white escapism. It is. I mean, this is like, oh, and, and, and they throw in Tandy Newton just for a little spice because I love oh, Tandy Newton. Man. Oh, yeah. Man. And you're gonna get some naked. Andy, we you're trust. gonna get some naked. Dandy Dandy this is a show on. Mrs. Griffin does not need to watch. Overall thought, yeah. I liked it. I'm a little confused by some of the casting choices in the show, some yeah. of them, but I, I do really enjoy this a lot. Hmm. Um, I have so many questions, but I'm super intrigued. I love me some James Marsden as well. Heck yeah. Oh my this gosh. Dreaming. Love him so much. Dreaming. So I'm, I'm just excited to see where it's going to go. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a full, we obviously talked so much about Luke Cage, so uh, we're going to do a full Westworld review. Uh, you guys can check it out on the channel. It'll be up, all four of us talking about Westworld, all thoughts. Apparently, I am 100% in the minority on this one, uh, so I'm really looking <laughs> forward to getting into the heavy heavy, and I'm sure everybody will hate on me in the comments, and I look forward to it. Love, Katie Cassidy. All right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's get into oh, highs and lows, guys. Highs and lows. We got a lot to get through. Uh, there was some really, really fun stuff on TV this week. Sinead DeFries, our fearless leader, take us forward. All right, well, David peed his pants because of the new Crown trailer. I said this to everybody <laughs> oh early God, in the morning. I got up, amazing. I always check my phone, I get up in the morning, and I saw this trailer had been released. I said it to everybody, like, must watch, <laughs> exclamation point. It was like, it is the greatest trailer. The Crown is coming out. Queen Elizabeth herself is getting her own series about how her and the, the handsome Prince Philip get together, because Philip, Philip was a pimp back in the day, mm. still is. Um, just, 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 just an incredible, incredible trailer. <gasps> I actually really like the trailer. Tell you, it's yeah. Netflix's well, most expensive show. Really? Most expensive show to date. <laughs> Hi, for Hi. Me. Even Hi. especially because Prince Philip is a pimp. Still, he's still a pimp. He's, he's such a pimp. Oh, he's such a it. pimp. Baller. Okay. All right. back, back, back when the monarchy was great. Oh, yes. man. And all these like, really like, like all these new people. Will this be our family show? Ooh, we can I watch would, this ooh, together. This would be nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, everybody over. I'll cook. I'll, oh. I'll make food. Yeah. yeah. 
We're gonna put yeah. a crown yeah. binge. Yeah. yeah. yeah so we call Tress Sutton or British. I. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm not. Oh, come on, Sydney. The priest is with your pumps. No, it's a problem. It's with Sydney Rick and I'm Gary Player. Gary Player? He's a golfer. They call him the Black Knight. Oh, man. No, not good. Next. Let's go. Hi, Tom. All right. All the South African fans are like cringing. <laughs> uh, the premiere of uh, Saturday Night Live. You guys, Dude. you guys, best episode of SNL that I can remember. I mean, for the first time, I'm laughing at something besides Weekend Update. It's the opening, the highest was, rating in eight years, it, the highest premiere rating, and it's simply because Alec Baldwin correct. is a peer. Margot Robbie. How was she? Was she she was, was fantastic. She was good in some. Stop she it. was great in some, and good in some. But I think it was like more of the sketch. But oh, she was great. I, I thought she her. was. She was fantastic. Um, I thought. That this episode of SNL, I like that you know SNL is like, listen, we need to push the ratings, we need to get it. So bring in Alec Baldwin, bring in somebody else that's not the cast member for this certain role. I think it, SNL at this point is just like we know what what's happening. We're not as socially relevant as we used to be. We need to be. Let's do this. They were fantastic, and the the political family feuds guy. Oh my god, crying. When he's like, when he gets the party, he's like, it's all just hellos. It's not even the feud yet. We need to go to the feud. I love that you went to Larry David's Bernie Sanders yeah. because I was still stuck on Bill Clinton at the very end where they're like, why are you late? And he's like, that's my business. <laughs> yes. Oh, come on. So good. So high. High all around. Hi. All right, what's next, Sinead? Oh, oh, and also, the weekend cut is Dookie Braid. I was so excited. The Dookie Dread's gone, y'all. Yeah, Dookie Dread's out. gone. Weekend cut his hair, finally. Now, Carl, on Walking Dead, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, what we do in the shadows gets a spinoff series order. This was... This is a good idea. These are one of those adaptations okay. that you should do. Yeah, because this was one of those few movies that set itself up for a great reality show. Totally. Oh, I loved it. Uh, Hi. Yeah, sure. yeah, Smart. <laughs> this is the kind of show you guys should be doing. Like, if you're going to adapt something, don't take something that's beloved. Don't take something that's good. Take something like this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's keep burning through these. <laughs> sorry, I mean. that was totally mean. Don't take I'm something so that's good. Don't take something that people care about. Just take this. <laughs> that's like how like Amanda settled on me. She's like, I don't want good or great. I'll just have this guy. No, you're right. Aww. What we do in the shadows is a fantastic movie. I, I apologize. It. It's from the dudes who were uh, flight of the conquerors. Yeah. Yep. It's so great. But what I meant was take Bricks something that Germain. is less known. Right, right, right. Don't take something that is like a beloved property and then try to make. Don't take the Departed. That's just Good dumb. <clears throat> or MacGyver. Mm. All right, Shasti, what's next? Our really depressing news. Adventure Time is going to end after season yeah, nine. So low. They could have kept doing the show forever. Forever. It's like, come so on. Fun. you It's yeah. fine. Yeah. All right, um, what's next? Archer now? will end after season 10. Sasha, it's okay. Sasha's in grieving, for mm. sure. The Purge could be coming to TV as an anthology series. Yeah, that's good. I'm, I like the Purge movies. Those are fun. I, I Listen, I know Purge is horror and everybody's like, but I've seen one they're, or two of the Purge. Like thrillers. Yeah. Act. It's not a real horror. I think horror, it's kind yeah. of a funny idea. But how do you do this? The Purge is one night, so we're following like one no, night for yeah, we're following, I, we're, uh, different parts of the country we're following maybe, and... characters to like what what le like the way Perry said it to me the other day oh, she was like what mm. <laughs> did you just have a hairball a little bit well, my bad. Well, I'm was, purging myself that was disgusting <laughs> <laughs> you guys this show is the best highlight reel Cody <laughs> Wait, please we're gonna have an entire like, thing vomit in the middle of me talking <laughs> so continue but, Perry okay, Perry, said Perry is talking and she's like what would be super cool and I agree w would be to follow these characters and kind of see like what leads them to purge mm. like what leads them like what's gone so the horribly MacGyver wrong pilots. in their lives and like what kind of people they were leading <laughs> up to a purge and I think that's the only way you could do it is to go all around the world yeah. and kind of like go into like different different Sopranos cities season and different, five. yeah <laughs> I'm undecided <laughs> I'm, I'm in, yeah okay Shane what's next uh, designated survivor and speechless get full series orders Apparently, designated survivor broke uh, a, a bunch of ratings mm -hmm. so and and I really liked uh, episode two. Speechless, is that and yeah. speechless. Is awesome. speechless is awesome. Speechless is fantastic. And I can't stand Minnie Driver. You know the, so like, Minnie Driver is the bomb. Hey, well, I like Speechless. Well. Did you see even like um, How to Get Away with Murder? Like their ratings were 107 percent higher. Than yeah. they were for their last year's premiere. That's crazy. And she's still getting away with this murder, guys. Uh, <laughs> Sinead, crazy. what's next? <laughs> right. Did anybody watch Crisis in Six Scenes? No. I did. And <laughs> I tweeted out it should have been called Boredom in One Scene. Yeah. It is horrendous, what about you guys. Miley? Oh my God, Miley. Miley should have been re. Oh, she's right there with the doctor oh, and the no. Chinese food lady. Oh, no. you guys, right, we got to burn. Let's it is it. horrible, <laughs> and it made me hate Woody Allen even more than I have in the last like 15 years. Yep. Shame. All right, the strain gets final fourth season. It should have been over this been over, season, yeah. but listen, uh, I'm, we'll finally get a wrap up. Maybe they'll figure out how to read this book. 
All right, What's Stephen Amell's shooting schedule. Yeah, he tweeted out his shooting schedule. It's like Arrow, Flash, Legends, Arrow, Flash. Like his week is like he's just bouncing all over Vancouver from show to show. This guy's everywhere. I love it. Next. Josh was underwhelmed with New Girl, but I loved it. No, I thought that Jessica and Cece's plot was boring, but Schmitz was high. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. New Girl's hysterical. I don't understand why anybody doesn't watch it. Sasha, Agreed. you said you were going to watch it. I, I, it's I, so oh, good. I it's just so had good. 47 episodes it's of Luke Cage to get through. It's LA. God, David, it's so, oh, yeah. it's so yeah. good. Why are they yelling? It's so early. It's so good. <laughs> Anyways, mail order family not going forward at NBC. What Ew, this never should have happened. Anyway, I yeah. can't believe that this got far enough that protests stopped it. NBC greenlit a show where a man orders like a Filipino bride yeah. because he's a widower and he needs somebody to take care of his kids and it's just disgusting apparently it is the most stereotypically racist thing anybody's read and it, it like got past it pilot. got past and then people were like oh no. wait this might be in poor taste because it, and then the boardroom's uh, nine white guys going like this is pretty funny that sounds i was in the philippines last year got nine hookers you know, oh, i'm like 42 percent filipino so i take direct <laughs> offense yes. to it was Agreed. so gross ew That's bad disgusting. form right. nbc let's burn through these last three and we'll get to twitter questions all right lethal the weapon is like the eight. best procedural on tv says david griffin and then sasha said look at d griff Starting smack in the highs and lows. <laughs> All right, what's next? Whoa, I got something to say. <laughs> David has something to say. What's next? The, oh, all right, well, I'm... Yeah, next. <laughs> next, we squash lethal weapon. No, it's all right. I got to say. No, I'll save it. No, it's all right. You can tell it's me after. Right. I'm good. Okay. I'll figure it out. All right. All right. Uh, Versailles premieres on Ovation, so only David cares about that. Well, we'll just go ahead and skip that. David's got nothing to say all about right. that. Modern I'm Family good. has I'm cast good. a trans child. I love is, this. This is awesome. Right. This is a high. Uh, yeah. Netflix's JT concert movie directed by Jonathan Demme. Um, if you guys want to come over for the Justin Timberlake concert oh, yeah, video, then we're there. I didn't know JT was here. You guys were talking about Justin Timberlake. I thought you were going to add another T. It was a JTT concert. No, just John Timberlake. Timberlake. Yeah. No. Oh. Um, Italian job set at NBC. Ooh, yeah. You're the worst renewed for season four. Hi. Maybe maybe one of the best episodes last week of any show this year so far. Which is crazy. Fantastic. It's getting Fantastic. better and Fantastic. better. That show is a bomb. Sasha watched Easy and will be teaching a feminist theory class at the Learning Annex next semester about everything it got wrong. Oh, yeah. You guys, that show, Easy on Netflix is shamefully horrible. <laughs> it is so repugnant and it devalues the female sexual experience in all ways possible. Uh, Joe Swanberg is the guy who created it. As I didn't know He's that. He's a busy guy. I'm watching it and as I'm watching it, I'm like, this was written by a dude. This was written by a dude. Oh God, this was written by a dude in his like 30s, 40s. Oh God, oh God, white, white guy, white guy, white guy who knows nothing about anything except his tiny little insular world. Hate it so much. The fact that it is made, the fact that it is on mm. Netflix makes me want to jump off the highest building in Los Angeles. And next week here, on uh, Collider TV talk Joe Swanberg <laughs> and you know what I'll be like you obviously don't know anything about female sexuality uh, we I, need to have a talk I told, I, we were talking about it last week uh, middle of the week and I was like I couldn't you get tried. through the first six minutes well, of the show I, I watched the first episode worse. so my thing about the first episode is he's 35 years old Talking about something that happens maybe when you're 40, maybe not. I mean, he has a wife and kids. I thought, I don't know, maybe he's projecting his own fears on also, there. Also, the know. casting, the couples are completely... Who is he, Judd It's impossible. Yeah, that couple, guy. those couples would never exist in real life. Next. No. Uh, all right, now I think that's it. We go to Twitter questions. Oh Wait, no, we have all? one more show. What about Jennifer Beals? Oh, Jennifer <gasps> Beals dance show at Fox. Hi, Who's Jennifer, Jennifer Beals. Beals? Jennifer, you wrote it. Oh, that's right. It's flash dance. Oh, flash dance. Jennifer right. Beals, who will also be, she's a maniac. She's going to be starring in the Taken series, and now she has a dance show set at NBC that me and Shanae will be doing full reviews of we'll on see, our private right channel. Now, I don't really get that into that the much. high <laughs> How dare you? Miss that. That is ridiculous. <laughs> All right, let's go to Twitter questions, guys. As always, send in your tweeter questions oh, to yeah. hashtag Collider TV Talk. We love hearing from you guys. Please insult me all oh, during the week. Crap. I really appreciate it. Sinead, what's first? All right, Daniel tweets, if you could marry any character from any TV show, who to be and why? Um, oh, I love well, this question. The, I love this question. The uh, weirdness of my Italian like my Italian background magnetizes toward Meta Soprano because I love her so much and her dad's a mob boss. <laughs> Weird. But I love Abigail Spencer in Rectify because she's so amazing. I, I just, I have a crush on that woman. But uh, if we're going to go all timers, I mean, come on. <laughs> Rachel Green in Friends, that's my girl. Oh. Oh, yeah. Love me some Rachel. Uh, yeah, this is so easy for me. It's Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Always and forever, Zach Morris. Are you kidding me? And I've been watching Pitch like it is my job. Yeah. Mark Paul Gossler. That beard. I love you. David? Oh. Uh, we watched a show. <laughs> it, uh, it's called... <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, um, is it somebody from Lethal Weapon? No, no, it's actually not a period piece. It's a fantasy series. Uh, uh, bad, I, get, I got called out last time. Legends of the Seeker, which is this excellent fantasy series. The best fantasy series next to Game of Thrones. Woo! It's comment section. Come on now. <laughs> Actress named... Uh, she played this character called Kara. I don't know how to Tabret? Bethel? Tabre? I, I love when you're on your first date to marry this girl. You're like, so do you say your name again? Well, no, but this, is, this is great. Fine. You might have a chance. But she is like one of the most gorgeous women I've ever seen on TV. And I was like, I would like just marry her. Let me see a, a picture. I want to see a picture. Let me see if she's good enough for you. Sinead? Um, well, oh, really of all yeah. time. <laughs> she's really pretty. Yeah, know, of, all, right? of all time, I'd marry Chuck Bass, Ed Westlake. <gasps> love yeah. him. Mm. Um, you would live such a good life. Oh, God, he's perfect. <laughs> but based on recent events, like I would totally marry Luke Cage because one, Aww. he can protect me all the time. And two, He's a baller, and three, and he he's works. hot. So man, I would totally marry Luke That is a good-looking man. Good. Hell yeah, man. and he's humongous, and I'm so like little, you know, like my five-three little butt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I would. I would adorable. marry. I would marry Luke Cage if Rosario Dawson came along with Luke Cage, and we lived together <laughs> oh in like a God, weird yes. polygamist. That sounds awesome. Also, Harlem. talk about reality hosts. Pad Malakshmi me in a second. That's oh, my yeah. wife right there. <laughs> I'm her in a second. All right, what's next, Sinead? Stuart tweets: If you could live in the world of a TV show, which would it be? Definitely Game of Thrones. <laughs> Definitely not. No. West no. Oh, Are you dead kidding? So no. fast. Game of Thrones. I'd have a sword through my neck for episode yeah, one. Yeah, like, Hey, you guys like, oh, like oh, I'd be raped and pillaged. No way, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, I think actually, Gossip Girl's a heads up call. Gossip Girl, if you could like live that life of on the Upper East Side, yeah, Chicken Upper East Side, like the day. best way, like the best clothes, yeah. like a driver taking you everywhere. That's what you have to exist if you're going to live in New York. Oh, that's so true. David, what do you think? The Simpsons. You never age. Your dad's an idiot. You're drinking beer all the time. It's great. That's yeah. Fun. Anyway, it's isn't the doctor? Yeah, there's a doctor. It's a black guy. It's like my dad. It's yeah. like I could be like I could be. Uh, what's his name? Doctor. I always forget the doctor's name. But I could well, be. Well, there's uh, Doctor Nick. He's. No, he's, no, no, no. The the, 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 the family yeah, the physician. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I could be his Dr. son. Hubbard or something? Yeah. Yeah, Doctor Hubbard or something. Yeah, I could be his son. What, what would you go? I said Gossip Girl. Oh, I do Gossip Girl. girl. I'm gonna go um, SpongeBob. Oh, You're living yeah. under the sea? Oh, yeah. I'm going to live under the sea. It's so, totally different. Do you work at the Krabby Patty? Hell no. Huh. What yeah. about Little Mermaid if you were one of the King Triton's daughters? Yeah, that would be cool, That's too. That's a movie, though. Mm -hmm. too, and, right. like, sleep in a clam? Yeah. 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 I, know this, I know this is a cop-out, and I know that yeah, everybody's going to be like, oh, did you say Sopranos, The Wire? If you done? say nope. Seinfeld, I'm going to punch nope, you in the not face. Seinfeld. <laughs> I mean, obviously, friends would be amazing. I'm Joey. I'm just sitting over there in my lawn chair in my decent apartment across from Hot Girls. Nope. I'm going Star Wars Rebels because I want the Force. I've never seen a full episode of Star Wars Rebels, but I've always wanted the Force, and I love lightsabers. Oh, that's cool. Good. It's good. All right. I like that. All right. Sinead, last Twitter question. Um, it's Stewart again. Huh. What's the hardest TV intro to get through? Mine is Deadwood. Heck of a show, but it's two minutes long. I know I'm going to get hate for this, but the Game of Thrones intro <gasps> is so long and Are it's the same me? every time. You're I never no, skipped that that's intro. That's not true. Yeah, that's not true. Not I know the visually, map changes. But, but the song is the same. Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, they Peter don't Dinklage, sing that Peter in Dinklage. The show. We <laughs> sing Peter Dinklage. Dinklage, Peter Dink, Dink, you guys Dink, know Dink, this isn't Dink, making Peter it better Dink, for you. Oh, no, you're <laughs> out of your mind. It's the best. Then. That's the best. Uh, True Blood was the best. The answer to this is so clear and simple. Two and a Half Men makes me want to rip my head off. The fact that anybody could watch that intro and then watch that show. Oh, God, that's such a good one. And Sasha broke the microphone. Kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. It's the worst. It makes, me, it makes me want to take a shotgun Awful. to everything. David Griff. I'd like Sinead to talk to me again, so I'll skip <laughs> one I was thinking of. I was a big Say fan. It. I was not a big fan of the Friends intro. What? Just the song, it's the same thing. It's just, I don't know. It's like, name, name, I'm name, sorry, Sinead. I'm so I'm sorry. Today. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm never, Sinead's, and I'm never, I'm blocked from her phone now. I'm never talking to her again. I'm but sorry. I literally, like, I've been shocked. <laughs> I just, I just thought That's friends like fan. the best intro. Oh, man. Okay, right. what's yours? I already said it. Oh, I forgot. Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, okay, guys, uh, that was Twitter questions. Guys, as always, thank you for sending them in. Hashtag a Cloud TV Talk. We love you guys so much. It's come to that time of the show. We don't do like a four part harmony. It, no, you do it at all. We're just going to drum roll. Are you oh, ready? Are drum roll? Shane. It's everybody's... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Guys! <laughs>
It's my turn for the pick of the week. Thank you so much. Uh, with everything that happened in the world of golf, I know this. Like maybe you people don't really watch golf, but I'm a huge, huge golf fan. America just won the Ryder Cup yesterday. Arnold Palmer, my sports hero, unfortunately passed away last week. Uh, brings a tear to my eye just thinking about it. And uh, there's a guy on the golf channel. His name's David Faraday. He also does on NBC's. He's an on-course announcer and he has a talk show. And just goes to prove that you can do an hour-long talk show with one guest and just talk and sort of mess around. It's very, very entertaining. If you like golf, if you like sports, if anything in general, he's one of the best interviewers on television. It's a long-form podcast. He's one of the inspirations for why I do my show, The Josh McCuga Show. It's just hour of talking to somebody about their life, and it's very, very beautiful done. Thank you, Golf Channel, for putting that on the air, and thank you, David Faraday. And he's got a goatee, too, even though you don't he like does. them. I know. And he's, and he's uh, Irish. He's from Northern Ireland. Hey, tighty, tighty, tighty. All right, before we get out of here, guys, again, check out our full uh, full review of Westworld Episode 1. You guys can check it out here on the channel before we get out of here. Where can the good people find you on the internet? Shanae DeFries. I'm online at Shanae DeFries and at that's so Shanae.com here on Mondays hosting TV Talk and Fridays hosting Movie Talk and hosting Mailbag over the weekend. David Edward Salsalito Griffin the <laughs> third. I like the Salsalito. <laughs> find me on Twitter and Instagram at Griffin DE. Of course, here every Monday with these lovely people. Also doing Star Wars Rebels on uh Third, oh, well, no, it's when we shoot. Uh, they'll be up on Saturday nights. So look for the Star Wars Rebels reviews. <laughs> also, too, David's uh, it. I did 10 episodes, mini reviews of Luke Cage. If you want to see my individuals in the Kuga, John Schnepp, Michael Medina, 10 episodes. So check those out on Collider Video. Sasha. Well, you know what's interesting? My nickname growing up was Saucy, S-A-S-I, and people used to call me Sausalito. But oh. that's not where you can find me. You can find me <laughs> at Sasha Pearl Raver on Instagram and Twitter, and you can see me here every Monday, and then on Fridays hosting FX Movie Download on FX at 8 p.m. And guys, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga here every Monday with these beautiful, beautiful people. You guys can uh, find me on my show, The Josh McCuga Show, YouTube.com. Uh, Saturdays on Film HQ on Comic Con HQ, just hanging out at Collider, doing some weird stuff. And check out our mini reviews of Luke Cage. Again, episodes 1 through 10. I believe they're doing 11, 12, and 13 today at some point. I'm not totally sure. And again, check out our Westworld uh, episode 1, season 1, full review. As always, guys, put down the book, pick up the remote. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.